thing that you'll notice is that this phone screen is prone to fingerprints, so uh, that might get kind of irritating during the reviews, and it has bothered me uh, every once in a while just in using the phone, but uh, it cleans up easy enough, you know. I don't think it has one of those oleophobic coatings. It doesn't feel like it. Uh, don't quote me on that, but it doesn't seem like it does. All right, so the first question is, uh, somebody says, uh, I heard that you cannot use ROMs on the Nexus One because it is touch only. Is this true? Well, it depends on the uh, the game emulator that you're using. You're going to have varying degrees of success depending on which one you're using. Um, first thing that you're going to have to do is assign the keys uh, in a creative manner. And most ROM most emulators have a something like this under their settings. The key settings. On this one I've used volume up and volume down and the reason I did that is because these touch sensitive buttons at the bottom of the screen here when you're pressing any of those you cannot press something on the screen because the Nexus one is not multi-touch you can't for instance be using the on-screen d-pad and at the same time hit one of these buttons the phone just it won't register so um, you know one way to get around having freeing up the screen is by using the trackball as a d-pad and so some emulators will have buttons on the screen so you can do it that way. Uh, for me, uh, that's kind of awkward. I'm used to having the D-pad on the left and the buttons on the right, but that's a way uh, of getting around the multi lack of multi-touch, I should say. Um, and you will get some strange response if you, if you set up uh, any of these buttons as one of your keys. And, and I did that earlier and I found out that sometimes the emulator would register um, the button touch, like say I had the uh, search button set up for A and the menu button set up for B, you don't want to do that because if you hit B you could either get B in the game or you could have the menu pop up. So depending on the emulator, depending on the game, you're going to have to get creative with how you assign those keys. For a very simple game like this that's just D-pad and A and B, I've found this solution works okay. But you know, it's not extremely comfortable it's not the most intuitive way to play games and here's a Genesis emulator which you can see looks exactly the same as the uh, Nintendo one I was just using now I can press a button or I can use the d-pad I can't do both at once so if I want to jump and hit I just can't do it because until that move is completed the last move that required an on-screen button is completed, I can't hit another button. So that's extremely limiting. And I even tried uh, assigning A or B to the trackball, and I could not enter both at the same time. It's like uh, no multi-touch, including the hardware. But really quick, I'm just going to use the uh, volume rocker and see what that does. So I'm going to be using the trackball for my D-pad and then volume up and down for my buttons, which of course is not the most comfortable way to do this. I keep wanting to touch things, assuming that the touch will work. And this trackball is hypersensitive, so sometimes it's difficult to select what you want to. I prefer the on-screen D-pad, but you kind of need to use the volume keys if you want uh, more reliable control for like A and B buttons. See, and I can't jump and hit. I can accidentally pull off some pretty cool moves every once in a while. If you go into the market and search for EMU, EMU you're going to find uh, a, quite a few emulators and the best way to find out if it's going to work on the Nexus One or not is just to read the comments because a lot of them will say uh, either in the description for the game or in the feedback it'll say you know works perfectly on the droid or works perfectly on the Nexus One uh, so if you just go in there and read all comments that's how you're going to get your your best information on any given emulator because there are just too many for me to uh, go through and say, oh, this one works well, this one doesn't, because it also depends on the game that you're playing. Certain games you can get by just fine with uh, trackball and the volume rocker, or even using um, 
the accelerometer for left and right, and then uh, possibly this for an A button, something like that. So, uh, you know, it's definitely not ideal. You can work it if, if this is something that you're really into, you can find some workarounds and, and play um, some games with uh, usually limited capabilities. I've received a lot of questions and requests in the games category, and I'll try to cover them all. Um, one that I've received several times that I, I'm not going to uh, attempt on video here is to install the biggest Android games I can find and play them. And I think the reason I've been getting a lot of that with the Nexus is uh, because of the limited memory that's available for use uh, by the user. If I understand correctly, there are several things in the works that might address this issue. I've read that there is an official update that will be released at some point, freeing up some of that memory. I've also heard that Google is actually working on official apps to SD support, meaning that you'll be able to so store um, large apps on the SD card. And of course, the way apps handle and store their data is a factor in that as well. I know that Cyanogen is working on uh, ROMs for the Nexus One. He's released one already, and I think that we're probably going to see a lot of memory freed up by Cyanogen. Also, if Google does it first and then Cyanogen can improve upon that, we might see a lot more space uh, freed up for the user. But beyond what I've said here, I'm, I'm just going to have to skip that topic for now. Uh, I've got a lot of apps on my phone, and you know, basically, it's not that exciting. You can just watch an app crash if you want to, or uh, have Android tell me that it's not a, it can't install it. Um, the other question I've been getting a lot is, uh, how do games work with multi-touch? That depends on the game itself. It depends if the game is designed to work with multi-touch. There are games in the market that are uh, that officially support that. Now, if you search for multi-touch, uh, unfortunately, you can't filter your search results by category. But you will find some uh, multi-touch games. Here's Pong. I'm going to leave both fingers on the screen at all times. As you can see, I'm getting kind of uh, jumpy response from each paddle. If I Yeah, so it says it has official multi-touch support, but my experience with this game is that it works better with single touch. So using the accelerometer as a directional control frees up your volume rocker, trackball button. Um, games like that are going to be much more satisfying, I think, on the N1 or single touch. So there are plenty of games out there that don't require a multi-touch. Um, that function very well on the Nexus One. Of course, you're all asking about multi-touch. Some of you just want to see a demonstration of some of the games that are available on the N1. Um, I suggest you to search. I'm actually going to link in this blog post to a video that was posted today of 50 different games being played on the Motorola Droid. Hey,